Frederick Sorier, a French artist, unveiled a collection of art in 1848 imagining a global community of republics, democratic and social. In this idealistic perception, individuals from across the globe are distinguished as separate nations, recognized by their unique flags and traditional attire. Prominent in the procession are the United States and Switzerland, marching ahead with pride. Following closely are and Germany, keen to make their presence known. Next, we notice Austria with the Kingdom of the Two Sicilies, Lombardy and Poland. Bringing up the rear, but with no less importance, we see England, Ireland, Hungary and Russia, each showcasing their distinctive flags and costumes. The French Revolution in 1789 marked the start of nationalism. It was a revolutionary period of radical political and societal change. French patriots took inventive actions to promote a sense of shared identity. They introduced the terms Le Citoyen and La Patrie, symbolizing citizenship and fatherland. Additionally, they designed a unique French flag, a symbol of unity and national pride. They transformed the Estate General into the National Assembly, a more representative institution. They revamped the administrative framework, abolished outdated customs, and created uniform standards. They also propagated French, fostering linguistic unity. They also consolidated the administrative system, abolished customs and internal duties, introduced uniform weights and measures, and promoted French as a common language. Napoleon's introduction of the Civil Code in 1804, commonly referred to as the Napoleonic Code, was a significant and transformative legal reform in France. This code redefined civil rights, abolished birthrights and privileges, and prioritized equality before the law, a move that was revolutionary for its time. It also secured the right to property, a critical aspect of individual freedom, and removed guild restrictions. The removal of guild restrictions was instrumental in promoting economic growth as it paved the way for free trade. Concurrently, this period witnessed a social heralding the rise of the middle class, comprising artisans, industrialists and businessmen. This emergence of the middle class was a direct consequence of the economic and legal reforms enacted during this era. This period also saw the emergence of a new social class, the middle class, which included artisans, industrialists and businessmen. Liberalism during this time restricted political rights to property-owning men, excluding women and property-less men. This was an era marked by the fundamental principles of liberal thinking that were deeply entrenched in the societal norms and practices. The focus was predominantly on economic and political freedom. But this freedom was extended only to a limited section of the society. Men who were property owners were seen as the only ones deserving of these rights. Women, despite their contributions, and men who did not possess property were left on the sidelines, their voices silenced, their rights curtailed. In the midst of this, a new ideology started to take shape. The concept of liberal nationalism aimed to change this. It was a movement that sought to end, once and for all, the rampant clerical privileges and autocratic rules that plagued the society. The concept of liberal nationalism aimed to end clerical privilege and autocracy. After 1815, major European powers restored power through the Bourbon dynasty, a historical aristocratic bloodline dating back from the 16th century well respected for their tenacious hold on their realms. They took the reins of power, reinforced the monarchical system, and ushered in a period of relative stability. They were instrumental in drafting the Treaty of Vienna, a monumental document created with the collective effort of Europe's most influential states. This treaty, signed in the magnificent halls of Vienna's Imperial Palace, was significant for its numerous objectives. Its primary goal was to curtail the territorial ambitions of France, aiming to prevent them from expanding their boundaries and inching towards a potential hegemony. Moreover, it respected the autonomy of the 39 states of the German Confederation, leaving them untouched, thus maintaining the balance of power in Europe. Revolutionaries like Giuseppe Mazzini, born in Genoa in 1807, aimed to unify Italy in a republic through secret societies like Young Europe and Young Italy. Mazzini, a compelling character in the annals of European history, was deeply committed to his cause. His birth city, Genoa, situated on the western coast of Italy, was a buzzing hive of political activity during his early years, 
laying the foundation for his revolutionary ideas. Mazzini's vision was not just limited to Italian unification, but extended to the broader concept of a unified Europe. His secret societies, Young Europe and Young Italy, were instrumental in propagating his revolutionary ideas, inspiring many to join his cause. These societies, though clandestine, were a beacon of hope for many Italians yearning for unity and freedom. Through their covert operations, these societies played a significant role in shaping the future of Italy. Engaged in various activities like propaganda distribution, organizing revolts and collaborating with other revolutionary societies across Europe, these groups provided a potent platform for Mazzini's ideologies. Ultimately, Mazzini's unflagging commitment and the relentless efforts of these societies contributed significantly to the unification of Italy. In the next part, we will cover the Age of Revolution, 1830 to 1848. This period highlights the significant shifts in the political, economic and social landscapes of Europe. It was a time of intense turmoil and change, sparking a series of revolutions that dramatically reshaped the map of Europe. Among the intriguing tales from this era, we will delve into the making of Germany and Italy. We will unravel the complex historical events that led to the creation of these two modern nations as well as the influential figures who played pivotal roles in their formation. Next, we will explore the strange case of Britain. Unlike other European countries, Britain did not experience a revolution during this period. We will examine the unique circumstances that set Britain apart from its continental counterparts and how its distinctive path influenced the course of history. Lastly, we will delve into the powerful force of nationalism that swept across Europe. Nationalism, a potent force that galvanized the masses, had a profound impact on the political alignment of the continent. It served as a catalyst for change, propelling Europe into a new era. And so our journey begins. Nationalism in Europe, 1830-1848.